out of rest. Greetings, I'm Shad, YouTuber, author, and huge medieval enthusiast. And one of the things I like to do on my YouTube channel is to look at fantasy castles and see how historically accurate they are, but not only just that, just how well designed they are from a functional and defensive standpoint. And I actually did that for Winterfell from the Game of Thrones TV series. Well, after I did my deep analysis on the overall design of Winterfell, many of my own fans were saying, saying, Shad, you should redesign it and make it proper. Because unfortunately, there were a lot of things wrong with it. Well, in hearing that, not fully understanding the rabbit hole that this would send me down, I thought, that's a great idea. Now, in the beginning, just based on my criticisms of the TV show Winterfell, there were some obvious improvements, but then I had a thought. A thought that would lead to the whole consumption of every free hour of time I had for the next few weeks. And I'm not kidding. You see, I've designed castles before. I love them, I study them, and as a natural result, I like to design my own. And in fact, people tell me, my, my fans, they say, Shad, you should design your ultimate castle. And I've already actually done that. It's called Honor Guard. I've made a full video giving a detailed analysis, breakdown, and tour of this castle. It's basically my tribute to historical castles and fantasy castles, because it does have fantasy elements in its design. And through this process, I have become quite adept at using a very basic but user-friendly 3D modeling software called SketchUp. This is the program that I design all my castles in, but not only castle swords and everything like that. So I actually have the skill set to redesign Winterfell into the best state it possibly could be in historically accurate to the castle-like elements that actually go into an overall castle's design, but also be true to the source material. And the thought was this, if I'm going to improve the Winterfell design, why not make it more accurate to how Winterfell is depicted in the books, especially if the depiction of the books is just a better designed castle from the get-go? So instead of just improving the TV Winterfell, no, I decided I'm going to use the book Winterfell as my basis. And just on cursory glance, it really did seem like the book Winterfell was way better designed than the TV show one. And there are some very significant differences. Indeed, the differences are so significant, I need to explain some of them to you, and this video is going to be epic. Indeed, I decided to recruit the services of a friend and associate of mine who I've been working with to bring Honor Guard into the Unreal Engine for a future project. So a big thank you to Yorick for helping out with this video, and I'll link to his art station page in the description below. And of course, huge thanks to my editor Oz, who have all put in a tremendous amount of time and effort into making this video. This video is going to be one of the most polished, most detailed, and requiring more man hours than any video I have done to date. I'm really excited for it and I can't wait to show you how this design turned out. Yet before we get there, there are some very important things I want to go over first. It's really important to understand the differences between the TV show Winterfell and the book Winterfell. So I'm going to explain some of those differences so we have a good point of reference. Then I want to share with you what makes Winterfell's design uniquely different compared to real castles. Because there are some, like Winterfell is a monster. And not only that, the Game of Thrones castles are just insane. And then after I build those foundations and we have a good point of reference, I'm going to reveal what the true Winterfell looks like. And oh my goodness! It's amazing! And after that, I'll be sharing with you some of the additional design choices I made for the layout for some of the buildings, and a breakdown of all the iconic buildings mentioned in the books, and a tour of the layout so you can truly see that this is Winterfell. One of the main differences between the TV show Winterfell and the book Winterfell is size. And I'm not like, wow, the, the sizes are so different. And honestly, it was a little tricky for me to get a good baseline to figure out how big Winterfell actually is, because when looking to the uh, official wiki, which has a great breakdown of the castle with quotes from the books where the design and information is directly sourced. There wasn't any direct reference to the size of Winterfell's full 
footprints, but there was a reference to the size of the god's wood. And on that wiki, there is actually a layout design for what Winterfell should look like according to the books, according to whoever made this basic image, and I actually disagree with a decent amount of it. Some of the design elements are not very good in regards to overall castle design. The size of the buildings are completely skewed, especially if you're going off the scale that this image gives, but it's certainly a respectable effort, absolutely. The God's Wood, as described in the books, is said to be three acres in size. Just, just think about that. Three acres, okay? So, just trying to get a size comparison from the pictures, because we don't have anything to, to directly scale TV Winterfell from, the God's Wood, as shown on TV Winterfell, should actually be about twice as big as what you see there. Now, the great thing about SketchUp, it's actually a CAD program. You can design everything to exact scale. And so, just working out some very basic math, a circle with a diameter of around 126 meters gives us a very close footprint of three acres. The math was annoying to figure that out, but correct me if I'm wrong, but pretty, like, I'm very certain after double-checking it, this is about three acres. The thing is, though, according to the books, the godswood is said to be inside Winterfell. The ancient godswood of Winterfell has stood untouched for tens of thousands of years, with three acres of old packed earth and close together trees creating a dense canopy which the castle was raised around. That means the god's wood is inside the walls of Winterfell. Not placed separate to it, inside. Now I completely understand why the people who made the TV show put the god's wood off to the side because putting such a, and their god's wood is only half the size of what it should be, right? But even putting that inside the walls of Winterfell would by necessity have to expand the outer walls that encircles the whole thing just so you have enough room for all the buildings. And perhaps then Winterfell would have been too big for them, but this is how big Winterfell should be. And I'm not going to cut any corners. So that is exactly what I did to get a rough kind of baseline for how big the overall Winterfell footprint should be. And it's huge, okay? And the circles you see here isn't the shape that I ultimately went for Winterfell. I think Winterfell would have a more natural kind of shape in regards to the angle of its outer walls that would follow the land in which it was built on. It's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. But this gives me something to work on. I can compare the sizes of the shapes and make sure that they conform to about roughly the correct dimensions. To give you a baseline, here is Onagar, the castle I designed. And in regard to the sizes of standard historical castles, Honor Guard is a monster. There are other historical castles that come into about similar sizes, and other castles that have much larger footprints, but those are actually the exceptions. And if you want a detailed breakdown, watch my Honor Guard video. But Honor Guard, in comparison to most historical castles, like I said, is huge. Now let's compare Honor Guard's footprint to the footprint size that Winterfell will have. Do you see the size difference? And don't get confused by this outer square of Honor Guard because that's not on a guard's footprint. The footprint is right here, and that's about the size of just the god's wood. If I grab the god's wood and bring it around, yeah, the god's wood is actually bigger in its footprint than all of Honor Guard. So Winterfell, just by comparison, is a monster of a castle, but it's not the only one. Winterfell, in regards to the castles in Game of Thrones, is rather conservative. River Run, Castell Rock, and of course Harrenhal, which is mostly destroyed, but Harrenhal in its heyday are in way bigger than Winterfell, like just by the descriptions. And personally, I love this feature of Game of Thrones, and I feel it's missing from the TV shows because the castles in the TV shows do not come nearly close to capturing the insane epicness of these monster castles in Game of Thrones. This is like a feature of this fantasy setting. The castles are monstrous in size. The next big difference between the TV show Winterfell and Book Winterfell are the size of the walls. Book Winterfell gives us a size that is very specific. According to the Wiki of Ice and Fire, Winterfell is a huge castle complex spanning several acres. Well, we've got that so far. Defended by two massive walls of grey granite with a wide moat between them. The outer wall is 80 feet high while the inner wall is 100 feet high with a wide moat between them. 
Okay, okay, so already that sounds really impressive. 80 feet and 100 feet. I was not prepared for how big this really is when you make a model that reflects the accurate sizes. And I'm not kidding, so with the good point of reference I was able to make as to the overall size of Winterfell's footprint, I then adapted it to some natural shapes that would conform to the land Winterfell is built on, and so this would be like the Godswood and the outer wall line would be something like here. I ultimately went with this uh, kind of shape and design to begin with to get a good base line and this is the right size this is several acres okay so Winterfell's footprint is huge but when you add walls to it suddenly the footprint doesn't look nearly as big but that's an illusion created by how insanely big these walls are 80 feet and 100 feet and the godswood has an inner wall around it too this is crazy. Again, let's compare my castle on a guard as a point of reference to Winterfell in regards to the wall sizes. The largest, the tallest walls in on a guard is the inner wall. Okay, so if we zoom in here and we go and have a look, these inner walls here are pretty darn large, but but also well within the realms of the sizes of historical castle walls. They are 10 meters high. Now, the inner wall of Winterfell is 100 feet. That's 30 meters, three times larger than the inner wall of Onagard. Let's now bring in the walls of Winterfell and compare them to the size of Onagard, side by side, just to get a comparison. And do you see the size difference here? Like, oh my goodness, Winterfell's walls are almost as tall as Honor Guard's on its hill, okay? And this inner wall being 30 meters high, like, oh my goodness. I'm just going to grab a section of this wall, bring it over, and compare the wall size when actually put flat, well, put it flat right on that wall. So this is the bottom of uh, Honor Guard's main inner wall, and that's the size of Winterfell's inner wall right there. This thing is huge! <laughs> and it honestly creates not only a design problem, but a functional problem for the internal buildings of Winterfell, because uh, they're gonna be overshadowed by this outer wall, it's just so big! Literally, the internal buildings will be dwarfed. I grabbed Honor Guard's gatehouse, doesn't even come to the size of this wall, it's not even sitting at the right height. If I bring it down and put it on the actual ground level, Honor Guard's gatehouse, which is a large gatehouse on normal castle sizes, is literally dwarfed by the outer wall, and the inner wall is even bigger. Now, of course, Winterfell's main keep and everything is going to be larger in size compared to not only Honor Guard, but of course, castle designs generally. But even then, they are going to be dwarfed, and especially the secondary smaller buildings and things, which would, of course, fill up you all around Winterfell's internal bailey. They're just dwarfed, and you barely see them from the outside. I've pasted in on a guard's keep inside Winterfell's walls just to get a comparison of how small the internal buildings will look inside these monster walls. And remember, Honor Guard is very large when it comes to historical castles. And of course, yes, Winterfell will make the internal buildings a bit bigger, but to still try and keep them in the realm, realms of realism, just look, this castle's completely dwarfed, and even the larger Winterfell ones, again, will be completely dwarfed. You can barely see on a guard behind these monster walls. So my solution to this problem is that the ground level of the internal bailey will actually be on a higher elevation than the external ground level. And the way that you justify this is that these walls were simply built around a broad, flat hill. Something like this, which is actually the land area I used for my own Winterfell model. Very broad, very flat, but don't let the, uh, you know, perspective uh, fool you. This is actually huge, like 20-something acres in size. And so they found this broad, flat hill, and then you dug out the sides of it and added the walls as kind of a retaining wall to this inner portion of raised earth. And now look at this, the internal walls don't look nearly as huge and they will not dwarf the internal buildings nearly as much. This is far more workable and far more practical, let me say as well, and also beneficial from a defensive standpoint. It doesn't take too long for the internal defenders to get atop these walls from the inside and defend the outside. And according to Winterfell, in between these two massive walls is going to be a moat. 
And to let you know, just getting to this stage on Winterfell's design already took a huge amount of effort and time to do, just like making the land area ready for it. This is the internal geometry of this land area, so uh, look, it was fun as well, especially when you're working towards an exact kind of result, but to get the contour and the, the hills and everything, because Winterfell is actually said to have hills, like the, like the internal land was not flattened inside Winterfell, there are internal hills inside the walls, okay, and so this is actually very accurate to Winterfell's internal bailey. You will notice when I give the big reveal as to finish the design, the Godswood doesn't stay in this location. I do need to push it off to the side a bit to make room for the main central keep, but also the old keep and all the other important buildings that are supposed to fit inside Winterfell's walls. So already the book Winterfell is quite different to the TV show Winterfell. Not only in size, the size is a huge difference, the layout, meaning the godswood needs to be inside, and the fact that there are two external walls instead of one line of walls, and the walls are just so big according to the books. The next divergence in my design comes to the overall aesthetics, such as the design of the crenellations, the corbels, the matriculations, the shape of the towers, and the angle of the roofs. Well, in regards to Winterfell, there are a couple of things that actually told me what it should be. Not my own choice, I was informed by my basic understanding. And in my very first analysis of the castles from Game of Thrones, I criticised Winterfell, the design from the TV show, for having the angle of the roofs be so low, because if this is in a colder climate and needs to deal with snow, which the whole thing of the Starks is, the angle of the roofs need to be much steeper so the snow will slide off the roofs. And that is exactly the design I was going to go for with Winterfell, High angled roofs were going to be a necessity, and that also changes the look of the book Winterfell very considerably compared to the TV show. The next thing to consider was the shape of the towers, and generally circular towers are far better than square towers. But then when I really thought about the aesthetic kind of feel of Winterfell, the nature of the Starks, sharp, strong angles felt very appropriate to the Starks and Winterfell, so I decided to go with octagonal shaped towers. Eight faces, which actually gives you the effectiveness of a circular tower, but has a different aesthetic. This shape right here has a very different look, and it is more appropriate to the Starks and Winterfell, in my opinion. And then from there, it was the corbels, the matriculations, and the crenellations. These are the battlements of Onagard, a very traditional castle-like design, with the matriculations being rounded arches, the corbels being kind of curved, as well as the merlons having an internal arrow slit, pointed tips on the merlons, and of course the internal crenelle, which gives us the overall battlements. This didn't match Winterfell, and in fact I decided to actually keep the design style from the TV series as a bit of a nod and try and keep at least some small visual similarity to the TV show. Winterfell because most of the other elements needed to change. And so this is the design of the battlements of Winterfell. Very blocky, bricky matriculations with very sharp angled corbels holding it up, and that is to match the style of the crenellations at the top. Kind of like double stepped in Merlons, and that suited quite nicely. This is what Winterfell should look like. And just look at the ascetic difference between these types of battlements Honor Guard's battlements and Winterfell's. Just changing this small thing affects the ascetic considerably. And then when you ramp it up to the size of the tower, well, these are the type of matriculations, the stepped out upper portion of the tower that you see here. Has a very distinct look and will give Winterfell a very distinct look and hopefully some similarity to the TV show where we can keep it, but the high angled roof here changes things very considerably, but it's a necessity because Winterfell, well, it has to deal with winter, funnily enough. My next job was to design all the internal buildings, and that was a job in and of itself. I went through multiple different layouts to figure out the best shape for the internal keep, but it's not just the keep. There is the old keep with the gargoyles lining the top that Bran is pushed off of. There's the broken tower, there's the library tower, there's the internal guard room 
room, barracks, a great hall, and all those things needed to be designed. And so I ended up making quite a few assets and everything between the designs, working with them. And then it was a matter of putting it all together to get the final finished result of what Winterfell should truly look like if you were to trying to be as accurate as possible to the books, but also according to accurate cast design with a consistent aesthetic. It is my pleasure to reveal to you the true Winterfell. So I have to tell you guys, I am really pleased with the result. This is probably my finest work I've ever done in SketchUp and the most impressive castle I've ever modeled. It took over a hundred hours to make and I tell you, I made it as accurate as I could to the descriptions according to the wiki which come from the books of A Song of Ice and Fire. There are some small concessions I had to make and some even additions I put in to just fill it out properly, but overall this is like 95% accurate accurate to the books and might even be fully accurate because I think some descriptions were vague and it was hard to determine exactly where something needed to go as a comparison to what. Also to let everyone know I've uploaded the SketchUp version of this model onto the SketchUp warehouse where anyone can download it for free and have a close look play around and honestly if you want to repurpose the assets and use it in whatever projects you want if you want to model the inside of these buildings be my guest. I release this as a free resource to the internet. It is my pleasure to give it to you. And not only that, separate to this completed model, I've also uploaded the assets. All these different kind of build assets of Winterfell onto the SketchUp warehouse. You can download the free version of SketchUp, it's called SketchUp Make, and then just sign up to the warehouse, download it directly into SketchUp, and then play around, have fun. You can then export this whole model as a Collad DAE file and import it into other 3D modeling software like Blender or the Unreal Engine, and do whatever you want with it. To give us a full point of reference as to the sheer magnitude of Winterfell, have a look at it side by side with Honor Guard. It is a monster! The central keep itself is about the size of Honor Guard and its mountain together. It is just crazy. When you go up to have a look at the footprint, the footprint of Winterfell's internal kind of castle, which is accurate to the books, there's an internal castle that's attached to the keep. That's about the full footprint size of Honor Guard's footprint. So what are we looking at here? Because there is a lot of elements to this castle and a lot to break down. First of all, speaking broadly, you'll see those small aesthetic choices now applied on the macro scale, the overall. So the design of those crenellations and corbeling when combined and then repeated throughout the entire model, well, it looks amazing. High angled roofs. Now something you'll also notice, because I do point this out generally as a criticism on other castles, is that the roofs on these castles are stone. They aren't wood. The only way you can achieve this is if the underside of these stone roofs have a vaulted ceiling, and that is exactly what's happened here, because Winterfell needs to be made to handle huge amounts of snow. This is why all the roofs, where there are roofs, if they're made out of wood, are very high angled. And when there are are not wooden roofs, well there's stone floors right at the top here because again they need to be made to withstand huge amounts of weight. Looking at the layout of Winterfell from above you will notice that there are many accurate elements. According to the wiki there are guard turrets on the outer wall and more than 30 watch turrets on the crenellated inner wall. What are those 30 watch turrets on the inner wall? It was hard to determine if that was actually referring to towers or like smaller turrets. And to cover my bases I actually added both. There should be proper tower walls as a part of the inner wall line and on those tower walls I also added watch turrets. And so if we zoom in that's what these are right here. So each one of these wall towers has a watch turret attached to them and 
it says there's more than 30. Well, on this model, there is exactly 31. We have the wide moat in between the two outer walls, and you'll notice that I placed the god's wood off to the side a bit. This was to center the inner castle, which makes the overall silhouette of uh, Winterfell from the front just look incredible. You can actually see the divided parts of Winterfell quite well from this bird's eye view. You'll see the old keep and the old bailey, the inner castle and the main keep, also known as the great keep, and the internal divisions of Winterfell. There are several internal baileys or wards within the castle, specifically seven if you count the godswood as well. I was particularly happy with the design of the outer gatehouse because there are many layers of battlements to it with ramparts and arrow loops all overlooking the main entrance to the castle. And because there are two massive walls to Winterfell, there is a secondary gatehouse behind the first one, which is connected by two drawbridges. Each one able to be raised. I mean, the defensibility of this castle is just epic. You'll notice that for this design, I decided to not do a secondary line of battlements facing the inside. There's nothing there. That means if any enemy ever takes the outer wall, they have no defensive battlements facing the opposite direction to defend themselves from people attacking them from the internal wall. Each section of wall is separated by consecutive towers, so if one part of the wall falls, they haven't taken the whole wall because then they need to battle and fight through one of these towers to just get to another part. If the entire outer wall is taken, there are collapsible wooden bridges where the defenders can retreat through to get to the secondary bigger wall and then collapse the bridge behind them so the enemy can't get access and these wooden bridges are placed at regular intervals around the walls. There are many very important iconic buildings that comprise Winterfell as a whole, so I want to point them out individually because they're all there. Everything you see here was not put there without reason or cause. You actually might be able to pick out some of the iconic buildings here if you're familiar with Game of Thrones, but I'm going to point out each one and explain why I designed it the way I did, mostly to be accurate to the books, of course. The most important building is, of course, the Great Keep. I actually went through a lot of different designs to try and find out the best and most appropriate Grand Keep for Winterfell, and there was a couple of, you know, hit and misses, some that was okay, some that didn't really feel right, and I ultimately settled on something a bit more authentic to the medieval period, a bit more kind of strong military, which is basically what you see this design here, but of course with high angled roofs on the towers, which is the keep you see here, but the grand keep of Winterfell is attached to many other buildings, and so I needed to take that into account as well. For instance, the great keep is actually attached to the armory by a covered bridge. There is also supposed to be a window on the covered bridge, which you can look out of and see the entire yard. So this of course informs me as to the placement of these buildings, the armory is right here, and it's basically a keep in and of itself, going with the size of Winterfell, how large and impressive and built up this castle is. And then on the other side of this internal kind of castle, this is like a castle within a castle, which is accurate according to the books. The Great Keep is the innermost castle and stronghold of the castle complex, meaning it has its own internal defensive system, essentially. And you can see that here. This is the internal castle of the larger castle of Winterfell. And as appropriate, the Great Hall is right next to it inside this internal castle. And the Great Hall was a, a bit tricky to try and do because it's huge. According to the wiki, inside the Great Hall can hold eight long rows of trestle tables, four to each side of the central aisle, and can seat 500 people. And so that's what this design is here. In actual fact, you wouldn't really see it because I haven't designed the inside of this building, but the first floor is actually very high. It goes up to this level, and these windows here actually represent a kind of mezzanine walkway platform that circles the entire first floor. And then the additional floors above are like fancier guest rooms for people whom the lords want to house within this inner castle. We have the small sept build by Lord Eddard Stark for his wife, 
Caitlin Tully. We also have the library tower, which has a staircase that wraps around the outer side. And I thought it very appropriate in just design and convenience to have a connection between the library tower and the great keep. So people who are living in the keep can walk to the library tower and do their reading and research without actually having to exit the keep itself. You have sealed off access to the other walls from this inner castle. When I say sealed off, it means you actually have to go through doors, which means you can barricade and block off access to the inner castle from the outer walls, but it also means you do have that direct access. And the inner castle has two gatehouses that provide access. One of the other crucially important buildings of Winterfell is the Old Keep and Broken Tower. According to the description, the first keep is a squat, round, drum tower. I found this very interesting because a drum tower isn't a type of castle that actually exists unless it's a misidentification of what is called a shell keep. A shell keep is basically a circle keep, and that's the most accurate one that I felt they were going for, so that is what I designed the first keep as. This is a very large and impressive shell keep. Now, it's fallen into disrepair and people don't use it, it, but what's very important about the first keep is that you get access to the broken tower through the first keep. Bran climbs the first keep to get to the broken tower because that's where he likes to feed the ravens. This is also very important to the story because Bran is pushed off from the first keep because that is where Cersei and Jaime Lannister is accidentally caught out by Bran doing something rather inappropriate. The first keep is lined with gargoyles at the top and is squat for its dimensions. It still fits big, but that is accurate according to the descriptions. Bran, when looking at the first keep after something happens to Winterfell, remarks on how surprised he is that he actually survived the fall. Around the first keep is what is called the Inner Ward, where the Lich Yard is located. The Lich Yard is actually where the servants of Winterfell are buried, and it has access to the underground crypt. This older space, the Inner Ward, is also where archery practice takes place, and according to the description, this archery practice is located next to the Broken Tower, which also places the Broken Tower inside this Inner Ward. And also next to the first keep, which all makes sense because Bran climbs the first keep to get to the Broken Tower as well. The Broken Tower was once the tallest building in Winterfell and is currently where the Crow's Nest is. According to the wiki, the guard hall is in line with the bell tower and further back the first keep. This was able to give me the reference point I need for their position. And so here we have the main guard room or essentially the barracks, a very large and impressive building because the amount of people that would be living in Winterfell, this is a small city, almost. And just to house the amount of soldiers here, you need a large and impressive building like this. But not only that, if there are individual residents of Winterfell who want to have a home for themselves to raise their family, well, that means there's going to be a lot more buildings scattered around the internal courtyards, which I have added in and I'll get to a bit later. And according to the description, in line for the guardroom is the bell tower and further back the first keep. According to the wiki, the bell tower is connected to the rookery by a bridge with the maester's turret located underneath. The rookery is where the ravens are raised. The bridge is covered and runs from the fourth floor of the tower to the second floor of the rookery. And this is is exactly what I've done here. We have the covered bridge, which actually sits atop the dividing wall between these two baileys. And glass gardens were an interesting thing to try and design for me because greenhouses didn't exist in the medieval period. So how would you design greenhouses with medieval technology? Because glass did exist, and my conclusion was to use arches like we see in gothic cathedrals. Diamond pattern medieval glass filling in between. We have the ancient weirwood in the center of the gods wood overlooking a pool of black water and then across the godswood beneath the windows of the guest house an underground hot spring feeds three small pools so this of course then gave me the position of the guest house which i interpreted to be like a, the, the most fancy kind of inn for people who travel to winterfell kind of like a country club retreat i mean it's right near those fancy hot springs and explains why people might want to stay in the guest house and not the many guest rooms that would be located above the Great Hall or within the Great Keep. We have the Dog Kennels, which is located near the Back Gatehouse. 
the main blacksmith, a brewery where obviously Brewer Bath does his work, and many other buildings as well. But what are these additional buildings? Because even if not stated explicitly, just for the general function, daily procedure, and special events of the castle, there are some very important buildings that should be present. For instance, the granaries, okay? This is where all the food stores would be kept. And for a castle complex this massive, there's actually going to need to be several granaries just to hold everything. There'd be stores in the undercroft of the main castle itself, the Great Keep. But this castle is supporting the population of a small city. There would be thousands of people here, which means a lot of food, which means you need a lot of storage. And so we have a very large primary granary right here, one for the inner castle, and one located near the stables and horse yard of the castle, which would actually hold most of the animal feed. And this, of course, brings me to the stables and horse yard of Winterfell. We have very large stables here to house the Lord's horses and, of course, chicken coops as well. These people are going to be eating a lot of eggs. Also very appropriate and necessary, a tilt yard or jousting arena and a market square. There's an undercover portion of the market and an open air section of the market as well. We've got a tavern and sheltered drinking area, which of course is located near the main tilt yard because whenever they have a large tournament or joust, you're going to be wanting the alcohol nearby for the festivities. And of course that is located near the primary brewery, so the alcohol doesn't have to travel too far to get to the outside tavern. There are also two greater stables that are located closer to the main entrances of the castle. This is so people visiting the castle can just house their horses there temporarily. When the Lord wants his horse prepared to be called on whenever needed, the horses would be moved to these stables to be on hand, and when the other horses, for the men-at-arms and the army, the soldiers, they need a place to graze and move around, and so they would be housed in the horse yards, and then for the horses that need to be called on hand and ready they stay in these stables and of course there are additional guest houses and also rooms for the stable master and his family. An often overlooked element of castles is the fact that the main warmth of castles is provided by fire and if that's the case there needs to be ample supply of firewood. And if you're going to be storing firewood, you need it to be under shelter so it doesn't get wet. And so there are many firewood stores all throughout Winterfell. This is the largest one right here because there would be so many fireplaces in this castle. In every main guest room, they would want a fireplace to keep that room warm. And just look at how many rooms would be in this castle complex, let alone the individual buildings where people live. But just in the larger buildings as well, there would be hundreds, several hundreds in fact, fireplaces all throughout the place which would consume a massive amount of wood. And that is even in the summer because you would want a nice fireplace during the evening where it gets cooler, but winter, and we know how hellish winters can be in this world setting, and so for Winterfell specifically, they would store up firewood in every corner. So we have firewood store and shelters all throughout this castle. With so many people in the castle, there's going to be those who are more important and less important, and you need to fill their needs as well. There is one large building that I added in that isn't actually mentioned anywhere in the wiki that I was able to find, but needed to be added for visual balance and also just a little bit of additional functionality and convenience and practicality, and that is the upper servants' quarters just like there is a dedicated barracks for all the soldiers and everything, if the Great Keep itself is reserved for the higher up nobility, and considering how large the castle is overall, the higher servants, like the livery maids, the squires and everything like that, it would make sense for them to have an impressive, fortified, and kind of dedicated building for them to live in. So I added a building that I call the Servant's Keep or the Livery Keep. And this keep would be there for the higher up servants and it would be a bit of a balance to determine where they would actually want to live in a more fortified kind of fancy keep or would they want their own home, their own cottage within the walls where they can raise their entire family. And that's what many of these other buildings are. Individual dedicated homes for some very important people who live within Winterfell. I expect some of them would be used as certain storefronts to sell types of trades, like there could be a carpentry building, weaver's cottage, where does the seamstress live? 
a leather worker. Remember, this is basically a self-contained city, and I know there is a town outside of Winterfell called Wintertown, but do remember how large Winterfell is and how full it is of people. And so with many different people from many different walks of life, there would also be things that they would want to serve their needs. For instance, a lower level inn or tavern. They probably aren't important enough to get a drink in the guest house, but an inn and tavern that is there to serve the commoner who just travels and is passing by and needs a place to sleep, and also for the common resident, the average foot soldier who doesn't have any clout to go into the guest house or the grand keep or anything like that, where does he get a drink? And so this is why this larger building, the inn, is located next to the guard house because that's where they go to have a drink every day. And of course there are several wells throughout Winterfell including within the main central castle. Each internal ward of Winterfell is barred off by a solid metal grate through their dividing walls. You'll notice that I didn't add any crenellations around the wall that surrounds the godswood, and that's because that wall and the godswood itself was never described to me as an actual defensive ward of the castle. The wall around the godswood seems to be mainly there as a dividing line, as as a separation. Here's the godswood, here's the rest of the castle, not as an additional defensive fortification. So when taken as a whole, looking at Winterfell from a distance, this castle is truly in epic size and proportions, and the amount of soldiers that it would be able to sustain if it has enough food stores and things like that for a full-on siege would be in the thousands. If you put a man on every single square meter of wall, you could almost fit maybe a hundred thousand soldiers on those walls. Now that would be too much to sustain in a long period of time, but if there is ever a massive battle and you have an army that numbers in the hundreds of thousands, you could actually fit them within in Winterfell, it is big enough, it would be pretty tight, and I think you would actually run out of beds for them to sleep in, in terms of inside all the buildings, but there's a lot of buildings here, having said that, and there is enough room on the ramparts to fit all those soldiers with bows and arrows and everything. This is a castle of truly epic proportions. So what we're actually seeing here is Winterfell as it should look, not only according to the books, but according to authentic castle design. Its design is accurate according to historical castle design, convention, and layout, but also those accuracies have been balanced against the fantasy aspects and sheer epic size of Winterfell according to the books. This is by far the largest castle I have ever modelled, but I am so happy with how it's turned out, and I really hope you guys have enjoyed this super detailed breakdown. And of course, as always, I hope to see you again. So until that time, Farewell.